Hey, Eagle fans, your Statesboro Walmart is your one-stop shop for all your Georgia Southern football and game day needs. Pick up your GSU sports gear here. We have t-shirts, hats, tote bags, koozies, stadium bleacher seats, car spirit flags, wall pennants, beads, and more right here at the best prices in town. Also, don't forget, we can handle all of your tailgating needs with our great food trays, baked goods, and fresh, high-quality meat, seafood, and chicken. Walmart. Save money. Live better. Walmart. On this week's show, Georgia Southern basketball with a huge victory at home against UL Lafayette. We talk with head coach Mark Byington about how things have been going. We also check in with head baseball coach Rodney Hennon. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Matt Yogas, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Matt, Georgia Southern right at the midway point right now for basketball. Baseball actually has some events coming up pretty soon, and they'll be getting underway before you know it. But let's begin with the basketball team. Big win at home against Louisiana Lafayette. Then they went on the road, had their winning streak snapped. Played pretty well at Troy, both on the guys and the ladies' side of things. But let's begin with how they did in a great atmosphere at Hannerfield House against Lafayette. Yeah, packed out Hannerfield House. You don't get to see that very often. Hopefully they left the fans that showed up with a good enough impression that they'll want to come back. But it was a really good win for Georgia Southern. Lafayette was unbeaten in the conference, the only unbeaten team coming into that game. You know, I think it's safe to say Georgia Southern made a statement. It was a 78-70 win. It was kind of back and forth a lot of the way, but Georgia Southern really, I think, was the better team and and deserved to win the game in that one. So a lot of momentum, and you kind of almost – Felt the letdown coming on the road at Troy, and Troy decided to get hot. They had a guy who hit six threes all year come in and go six and nine from long distance, and Georgia Southern just went cold in the last five minutes of the game. Not a great loss for the Eagles, but a great win on Thursday. All right, well, we're right here at the midway point. We had a chance to talk with head coach Mark Byington about where he feels the Eagles are at this point in the season. Well, Josh, last week you did catch up with Coach Byington. We played part of the interview last week. We have time for the whole one today. That's right. It's still the midway part in the season. A lot of things haven't changed. Let's get out and see what Coach Byington has to say about how things have been going so far. Well, we had a good non-conference season. And uh, non-conference, we were 7-2. and uh, Had some very good wins. Uh, went on the road and won at South Florida against a, a, a big team. And, and won at Stetson. So we got some valuable road wins. And took care of business at home. We won every game at home. And uh, got off to a good start in conference play so far. We're three and one, but uh, conference play is 20 games. So uh, we're just kind of getting our feet wet with that. It's a long distance race that we got to continue to keep getting better and growing. But uh, uh, three and one's a good start right now, considering we only had one home game in conference play. Do you break up the season in, in, in halves and thirds or, or anything in particular? Um, we we kind of did it early in the year, um, and that was because we would have breaks, whether it be holiday breaks or exam breaks, and we did it early in the year. But right now, we're on a consistent schedule. We play every Thursday, Saturday um, from here on out. So uh, we really just kind of take things one week at a time, uh, depending on the travel and everything else. So uh, we stay in the moment and, and not really get too far ahead. You knew that you had a pretty good team coming up this year, but I think there was a lot of questions on how these guys would gel together. Do you think they're gelling a little quicker than you may have thought? Well, we're still growing as a team. We're still identifying roles. We're still learning how people are going to be, which is exciting because I think this team could keep getting better and better. And, uh, you know, you're kind of seeing guys' chemistry getting better. Uh, We just had two good road wins in the conference. And I think for the first time all year, uh, we play with an identity and we understood each other a lot better. Um, We've done some moments earlier on, but I thought the last two games we did it particularly well. Last year, Jelani Hewitt started out red hot. Non-conference was averaging 25 thereabouts. This year, much of the same. This year, it seems like uh, people once again trying to concentrate on him, but this year it seems like you have more scoring options than you did last year. Well, I'm so proud of Jelani. You know, he's already led a league in scoring. He was one of the nation's best scorers last year, and he's one of the nation's best scorers this year. But his focus is not on trying to win a scoring title or doing all that. His focus is on helping the team win. And it depends on what the defense wants to do. If they want to double team him or trap him or completely take him out, he's been a willing passer. He's helped other guys get better. He's been a tremendous leader. So I think we'll judge Jelani on wins and losses, and he's doing a very good job of that right now. 
seems like consistency, you're going to get what you get from Jelani. Trent Wiedemann pretty much secured himself of hitting somewhere between 12, 14 points, 7 to 10 rebounds a game. It seems like that third scoring option is what's real important. It seems like you've got Eric Ferguson in the mix right now. He should only get better. You've got Mike Hughes around. Mm -hmm. He's He was hot early, maybe not so much now. And Curtis Diamond seems like he's been able to fill that role as well. Yeah, you know, we don't need a, a, a particular guy to really have a big score night to win. And we, we've had different guys step up throughout the season, which I think makes us tough to guard and gives us better balance. And, and there's been particular games where uh, guys who are less heralded have really stepped up and helped us win the game. So uh, we just want everybody to come in and contribute, everybody be ready to play. And you never know who's going to be, you know, particular, going to have a good night. But uh, I think the exciting thing is we have a lot of options. So hopefully, um, you know, the ball just finds the open guys, one of the things we always preach. Well, you also mentioned that you expect this team to, to kind of get better as the season goes on and as they continue to gel, which is good because you're playing so well right now. Yeah, I think if you'd ask any coach in the Sun Belt right now, their team's not playing at championship level. And, and they're not supposed to be. It's January. And we got 16 more league games to go that you just want to keep, keep getting better and better. And you, by the time you get to March where – uh, all the games are crucial, and it's winter go home. You hopefully you're playing your best basketball. All the lessons are learned, and and you're and you're going out there and you're playing a terrific game. So uh, you just want to uh, continue the growth, uh, continue the upward trend, and then hopefully by March you're playing your best basketball. With more than 100 years of experience under one roof, Complete Car Care on 207 Northside Drive can do it all for your car or truck, gas or diesel, even hybrids, motors, tune-ups front end, air conditioning, transmissions, electrical. Complete Car Care does it all. When others say no, Complete Car Care says yes. Come see what Michael and his team can do for you at Complete Car Care, 207 Northside Drive. And next up for the Eagles at Texas State on Thursday night and then at Monroe on Saturday before coming home to host Appalachia State. Hopefully a good crowd comes out. Thursday evening at Hanterfield House. Well, moving on now, shifting gears a bit. The Georgia Southern baseball team, Matt, coming off quite a year. They go on the road in the uh, regionals, knock off Florida State, huge for the uh, program. Weren't able to get it done and move on, but still a great year. And now they're getting ready to come back and play once again, getting things underway pretty soon. Well, Josh, I think the biggest storyline in the offseason was the loss of some key players, some, some guys who weren't seniors either. Sam Howard gets drafted in the third round, the, the Friday night starter, the lefty who pitched an unbelievable game against Florida State, that game you mentioned, a two-hit shutout in that one. And then they also lose Garrett Chapman, who was the, led the team in batting average as a freshman. He homered in that Florida State game. He transferred. He was going to be going to junior college, I guess, looking for uh, some other opportunities down the road after that. But those are some two big holes to fill. The good news is we have plenty of, of offense coming back. You have Aaron Mizell, obviously. Really, non-conference numbers were spectacular. He hit the SoCon, hit a little bit of a slump, but obviously showed what he can do as a right fielder and at the plate. And, and you get Evan Challenger back in the mix, a guy who missed last year with an injury. He's going to get back on the mound this year. Might be a weekend guy. Might even be a Friday night guy. We saw that kind of stuff out of him a while ago. So there's some key pieces that are going to be back on this team. And I think Georgia Southern is going to continue the trend of annoying Sunbelt teams that didn't think they were going to be as good as they are. Yeah, Challenger had Tommy John surgery. And like a lot of people with Tommy John, sometimes they come back with a little more velocity. That seems to be the case. Big day coming up for Georgia Southern as well. Their evening with the All-Stars, which features Dale Murphy. Let's get out and see what Rodney Hennon had to say about that, as well as the upcoming season. I'm really excited about this year's event. I, I think especially uh, the Braves fans that, that, that grew up in our era. Uh, we all remember Dale Murphy and, uh, you know, one of the all-time great Braves, uh, two-time uh, National League most valuable player. And, uh you know, just a you know, as I remember as a kid, just a, not only a great player, but a great a great person to look up to, a great role model. So we're awfully excited about him being a part of this year's event, and uh, we're also going to bring back Sam Howard, and uh, Sam's going to talk a little bit about his uh, experience the first year in, in professional baseball as well. The annual event, you've been doing it for a few years, and it seems like it, it keeps getting more and more success. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's not only been a good event for our program, but I think it's been a, a, a big hit in the community as well. And uh, it's continued to grow, and, you know, we're, we're hoping for a big turnout again this year. 
Yeah, for those interested in, tif- uh, in tickets, we, we have several di- different packages. Uh, we, we, we sell corporate tables, uh, you know, for $800, which uh, includes some autographed items and, and also uh, passes to the meet and greet. And then uh, individual tickets are on sale for $75 for adults and $50 for, for kids. And uh, you can order your tickets by calling the Georgia Southern Athletic Foundation at 912-478-5520. Well, we just uh, started work uh, yesterday, being being the first day of, of classes. We're able to get out on the field in groups. Uh, this week, we can start uh, our team practice on January 23rd, which is three weeks out from opening day. That's the mandatory start date uh, with the NCAA. So we're awfully excited about this season. Obviously, the first year uh, going into a, an outstanding baseball league in the Sun Belt Conference, and uh, we're, we're certainly uh, looking forward to that challenge. You feel like the season from last year still has a little spring in the step for these guys as they get ready for this season? Well, you know, every every team's different. Every year is new, but, you know, certainly by, by making the run that we made last year in the Southern Conference Tournament on into the regionals, uh, certainly I think gave some, pro, uh, some momentum to our program heading into the offseason, and uh, our players Players worked really hard this fall. They did a, a nice job in the classroom as well, and uh, certainly I think it helps to, to head into 2015 on, on a positive note. How much have you been researching the Sun Belt, and what do you see? Uh, it seems like there's at least one team that really stands out. Yeah, you know, Lafayette had an outstanding year last year. At one time, they were ranked number one in the country and, and hosted a regional and, and a super regional. Uh, you know they're they're likely to be the the preseason favorite uh, going in, but it's traditionally been a a very good league top to bottom. Uh, some some programs that have been strong over the years include teams like South Alabama and Troy, Arkansas State uh, had, had a very good season uh, last year. Overall, it's a pretty deep league. So. Uh, it, between our conference schedule and our non-conference schedule, if you take a look at that, uh, you know we, we're going to have a challenge every time we, we take the field, so which I, I think is going to be good for our team. Uh, should be good for our preparation here leading up to opening day, and and uh, hopefully will help us continue to uh, to improve and, and play our best baseball when we need it most. Well, Matt, no secret, this is going to be your last Eagle's Nest as you get ready to move on to bigger and better things. Your thoughts, though, on what you'll remember, especially about Georgia Southern and your stay here. I guess over the last year, there's been quite a bit from beating Florida to the moving to the Sun Belt and the excitement of winning the championship this year. Yeah, I think what I'll remember more than anything is the people. Obviously, my family here at the Herald has been great. It's been a pleasure working with you. And really, you'll agree with me on this. Georgia Southern's administration over the last four or five years has been really transparent. You know, it's been great, to, accessible. It's been easy to talk to President Brooks Keel, Tom Kleinline, all the coaches that have been great to work with, and there's been so many people that I've met along the way that I'll appreciate. And in the prep ranks, too, I got to throw out some shout outs to Ron Hutchison, Burton Kemp, Jan out in Portal, Shirley out in, in Southeast Bullock, all the people that help us get stats and, and keep everything together in, this, in the, the pages of the Herald. So, a lot of great people and a lot of great moments, like you said, winning the Sun Belt, beating Florida, you know, uh, going out to California for baseball. You know, I think I've been to 11 <laughs> states, South Dakota, North Dakota. Dakota. So it's it's been a pleasure. It's it's been great. Hopefully everybody has enjoyed my work, and I uh, look forward to watching you to follow the Eagles down the road. All right. Well, we appreciate everything you've done, and I've had a lot of fun with you, especially a lot of the road trips we've gone on. Whether it's been the playoffs, and we went all the way up to Old Dominion and made that trip, and and even recently going up to New Orleans and kind of getting helping be there with me to help both of us get our feet wet into the Sun Belt. And and again, I hope you'll continue to follow, I'm sure you will, Georgia Southern and all the people. And speaking of which, we have to say goodbye to Victor Cabral as well. I guess he's heading down, we didn't mention that, he's one of your good friends and he's heading to Sanford to uh, be with Reunited with Chris Hatcher. Yeah, let's not bury the lead. I think that's the bigger story. Georgia (laughs) Southern's losing a lot more with him than with me leaving. All right. Well, once again, we appreciate everything you've done and wish you luck in the future. For Matt Yogas, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.